couple of brief announcements. We're doing something today that is very unusual and very, very special. Friday, two members of our congregation, Gary Anders and Judy Harlan, got married under the now somewhat odd laws of the state of Alabama. And, uh, and today, in place of the sermon, we're going to have the blessing of their marriage. And we all take vows to support them in their marriage. And so we're going to re rehearse that part right now where you say, we will. So, Amen. let's do it with a little bit more vigor. We will. That's right, that's right. And also, as part of, uh, you know, you got the email that I sent Thursday about uh, protocols, uh, voluntary protocols of uh, to stop the virus spread. Uh, we are still singing, but we're going to do two or three verses of each hymn rather than nine verses of a hymn. And uh, so before each hymn, I will announce which verses we will be singing. And in the future, since this was made after the uh, uh, liturgy was, uh, the bulletin was already published, in the future we will, it will be in the bulletin which verses you will sing. Thank you. Verses, let's see, verses 1, 2, and 3 of hymn 135.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are given. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. 
The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees run. And strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned in his king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Verses 1, 2, and 4 of M 121. and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Congregation may be seated. Gary and Judy. Those of you who would like, the blessing of a civil marriage is found on page 433 in the Book of Common Prayer. Gary and you, you have come here today to seek the blessing of God and of His church upon your marriage. I require, therefore, that you promise with the help of God to fulfill the obligations which Christian marriage demands. Gary, you have taken Judy to be your wife. Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her? in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others to be faithful to her 
as long as you both shall live. Judy, you have taken Gary to be your husband. You promise to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as you as long as you both shall live. All right, here's your part. <laughs> well, you who have witnessed these promises do all in your power to uphold these two persons in their marriage. We will. <laughs> would extend your hand, your ring hands. Bless, O oh Lord, these rings to be signs of the vows by which this man and this woman have bound themselves to each other through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, author of salvation and giver of all grace, look with favor upon the world you have made and for which your son gave his life, and especially upon this man and this woman whom you make one flesh in holy matrimony. Amen. Amen. Give them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their common life, that each may be to the other a strength in need a counselor in perplexity, a comfort in sorrow, and a companion in joy. Amen. Grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will, and their spirits in your spirit, that they may grow in love and peace with you and one another all the days of their life. Amen. Amen. Give them grace when they hurt each other, to recognize and acknowledge their fault, and to seek each other's forgiveness and yours. Amen. Make their life together a sign of Christ's love to this sinful and broken world, that unity may overcome estrangement, forgiveness, heal guilt, and joy conquer despair. Amen. Give them such fulfillment of their mutual affection that they may reach out in love and concern for others. Amen. Grant that all married persons who have witnessed these vows may find their lives strengthened and their loyalties confirmed. Amen. Grant that the bonds of our common humanity, by which all your children are united one to another, and the living to the dead, may be so transformed by your grace that your will may be done on earth as it is in heaven, where, O oh Father, with your Son and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign in perfect unity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray especially for Russell, Angie, Arthur, Doug, Jay, Nicole, Denson, Leanna, Roger, Carly, Lil, Deacon Trisha, Lynn, Warren, John, Scott, Mary Lou, Becky, Myra, Sean, Ashlyn, Chris, Will, Jane, Shirley, Betsy, Liz, Rod, Amber, Mary, Rem, the Hines family, Claire, Daisy, Lisa, and all those in need of prayer during this pandemic. Are there others? The cowards outside. We also pray for those on our long-term prayer list, especially Margaret, John, Donna, Kristen, Chuck, Keith, Ralph, Martha, Adrian, Warden Gladys, Will, Kermit, Ivan, Roselyn, Dean, Ryder, Donald, Janet, Jean, Tom, the Eula Battle family, Doug, and the Mike Dwyer family. We pray for all first responders and all in the armed forces and for their families, especially Joe, Tim, Christopher, Brewer, Lewis, Patrick, Brandon, Ashlyn, Sarah Grace, Bernie, John, Cody, Hunter, Joey, Derek, and all in harm's way. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for our fellow parish of St. John's in Monroeville, Alabama. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the province of the Angl Anglican Church of Chile. We pray for the people affected by all natural disasters. 
We give thanks also for the wedding anniversary of Taylor and Ross, and the birthdays of Carol, Sally, Pam, Julie, and Ion. Service continues on page 430. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for your tender love in sending Jesus Christ to come among us, to be born of a human mother, and to make the way of the cross to be the way of life. We thank you also for consecrating the union of man and woman in his name. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out the abundance of your blessing upon this man and this woman. Defend them from every enemy. Lead them into all peace. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle about their shoulders, and a crown upon their foreheads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, in their sleeping and in their waking, in their joys and in their sorrows, in their life and in their death. Finally, in your mercy, bring them to that table where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. In Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may faithfully live together in this life and in the age to come, have life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please stand. Pass the peace. Congratulations. That didn't hurt, did it? <laughs> very special welcome to all of you. We're glad you're here at St. Paul's Chapel in Magnolia Springs this morning. And I would remind you that all baptized persons are invited and encouraged to receive Holy Communion at this altar. And uh, if you're a visitor, we would ask that you complete a visitor's card found in the pew rack and place that in the alms basin when it comes around or gives to an usher following the service. Uh, a couple of announcements that are not in the bulletin, and I'm going to get my cheat sheet out here. Uh, one is that uh, the search committee is, uh, their work is ongoing. They've been working behind the scenes for a couple of months, and they're coming out uh, today with uh, a survey uh, right back there. Ann's got it, raising it up. And uh, uh, it's also available online, but we need each and every person to get a copy of the survey, complete it, and turn it in. Or you can do it online. It's your option. But it's very important data that the search committee needs in their search for the next rector. Also, how many of y'all have seen these? A lot of them. Some, some of you probably have them on your card. Some probably don't. I want you to know we've got a few of these in the church office that are available on a first come, first serve basis. So it's got an adhesive on the back and it will go on your car. I've got it on my car. Nora's got it on her car. And uh, just let everybody know that you're an Episcopalian. So those are available. I call your attention to the other announcements in the bulletin, especially the uh, special service 
for Martin Luther King Day next Sunday night at St. James Church Fairhope. And uh, also uh, the memo, the, the note about Ellen Jerkowitz. She is retiring after many years as Alter Guild and Tender of the Linens. And she did a very good job and we are very grateful for her ministry in our midst. The vestry has commissioned a fair linen that will be dedicated at a later time and will adorn the altar when that time comes. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you 
joining their voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Of God for the people of God. 
Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you to feel you in your heart by faith that God is here.
Good Thanksgiving, let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and the heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, and say the Holy Spirit of Christ our Lord, to Him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all your glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you, now and always. Amen. Amen. Verses 1 and 4 of hymn 616. <laughs> Thank you.